In this lesson, we'll see how to use matplotlib from within a Jupyter notebook. Jupyter is a web-based application that allows you to create living documents that contain live code, mathematical equations, explanatory text, visualizations, and even interactive widgets. The real power of these documents is that they make it extremely easy to share your findings with other researchers. By sharing your Jupyter notebook, your peers will be able to easily reproduce your research, thereby verifying your discoveries, and also fostering a much more collaborative environment amongst your colleagues. While a Jupyter Notebook has the capacity to work with a multitude of programming languages, we'll be using it with Python via an IPython kernel. IPython is a powerful interactive Python shell that started life as a simple afternoon hack, but has since become increasingly powerful and popular and even includes tools for doing things such as high-performance parallel computing. For us, though, its most important feature is that it provides a kernel for running within a Jupyter notebook, the combination of which I'll be referring to from here on out as both a Jupyter and an IPython notebook interchangeably. Installing everything you need to run a Jupyter notebook is super simple. First, open up a terminal and activate your MPL environment. So we'll source activate MPL. Then we can use the Conda package manager to install IPython in Jupyter. Conda, install, Jupyter, IPython, and hit enter. Once you have everything installed, you can fire up the notebook server by running the Jupyter command line script and passing in the notebook option. This will start up a Tornado web server that runs the Jupyter notebook web application. Once that starts up, it will open up a new window in your default web browser and point it at the notebook server. I'm going to go ahead and start up my Jupyter Notebook now. The Jupyter Notebook main page will list everything in the current folder, and on the right-hand side of the page, you'll see a drop-down with the text new in it. Go ahead and open that up, scroll down to the very bottom under the Notebook section. You should see an option that says Python 2 or 3, depending on which version of Python you're currently running. Click on that link to create a new notebook. And at this point, you can run any number of Python commands here and see their output right in the browser. We'll set the variable answer equal to one plus two. Then we'll print the text one plus two is, and we'll print out our variable answer. Then if we hit shift enter to execute the current cell, we can see the result of our simple little bit of code. One plus two is three. The point of this lesson is to visualize data in the IPython notebook. IPython makes it super easy to get our matplotlib output to display from within the notebook. It does so through one of its built-in commands called matplotlib. Incidentally, IPython refers to these built-in commands as magic functions. So let's go ahead and call the matplotlib magic function now and pass in the inline argument to make sure that it displays all matplotlib output in the notebook instead of an external window. To call a magic function from within IPython, you first preface it with the percent sign. We can call the matplotlib function and pass in the inline parameter. To run this command, click on the cell menu in the menu bar above, select the run command. But honestly, that's a bit cumbersome in an interactive coding session. Fortunately, Jupyter Notebooks have a plethora of keyboard shortcuts that we can use to make interacting with our code faster and more enjoyable. The Jupyter Notebook gives us three keyboard shortcuts that we can use to execute the code in a cell. The first is Control Enter, and it will simply execute the code for us in place. The second, Shift Enter, which we've already seen, will run the code and advance to the next cell. Or if there is no next cell, it will go ahead and create one for us before advancing to it. Finally, we can hit Alt-Enter to run the current cell, insert a new cell below it, and advance to that one. Choose whichever option you want and execute the current command. I'm gonna do Shift-Enter to create a new cell below it. And while the matplotlib function sets up our notebook to display the output from matplotlib, it doesn't automatically import the matplotlib library for us. So we'll still have to do that before we can interact with it. So the next step is to import the pyplot module with the following command. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Go ahead and execute that to import the pyplot module. And now that our notebook is properly set up and we've imported the matplotlib library, we're ready to start plotting. Let's go ahead and try a simple plot now. We're going to plot a straight line using the pyplot.plot function and the range built in to create our data. So in the current cell, type plt.plot, and we'll call the range built-in function, and pass 10 to create a list of values from 0 to 9. Go ahead and execute that cell, 
and you should see a simple linear plot show up right below the code that we just executed. You've just seen how to get matplotlib to work with an IPython notebook. But before we finish our lesson, you should understand that Jupyter Notebooks have two main modes in which they operate, edit mode and command mode. In edit mode, you can edit the text within a cell. To enter edit mode, navigate to the cell that you want to edit and hit enter, or double click within the cell. The term command mode is a bit of a misnomer, since the edit mode actually has quite a few commands of its own. The difference is that commands in command mode operate at the notebook level, whereas commands in edit mode mainly operate on the current cell. To enter command mode, just press the escape key. To see a list of all the commands available for each mode and their corresponding keyboard shortcuts, press Control M followed by the H key, and you should get a modal dialog that pops up listing all the keyboard shortcuts available to you in each mode, command mode and edit mode. To escape back out of this, just hit the escape key. If like me, you're on a Mac that has a retina screen, you may have noticed that the current plot we have here looks a little fuzzy. If you run into this issue, IPython provides a function that allows you to specify the output formats that you want to support, and one of those just happens to be the retina format. To add support for retina output, you'll have to import a function called setMatplotlibFormats from the IPython.display module. So we'll type out from IPython.display import setMatplotlibFormats. Then we'll go ahead and call our function and we'll pass in the string retina. And now if we went ahead and ran our plot function from above, we should see a much crisper plot come up. So I'll say plt.plot range 10. This is a much nicer output here. We've just seen how to set up an IPython notebook to display matplotlib output. And we also learned just enough about Jupyter Notebooks for us to be productive with it. We'll be using this combination of Jupyter Notebook and IPython kernel to explore matplotlib for the rest of this course. So by the end, you should be quite comfortable with this extremely productive tool for data science.